Uh, my name is Joni. I'm a compulsive overeater and food addict. I weigh and measure three meals off the gray sheet. I write them down. I call them into my sponsor. If I need to make a change, I call my sponsor or another gray sheeter with at least 90 days of abstinence. And in between those three delicious meals, I only have black coffee, tea, or diet soda. And there's always a way to stay abstinent. So first of all, thank you. Um, first to Javi for inviting me yesterday to speak. And um, honestly, I was in a funk yesterday and uh, she said, would you like to speak? I said, I will speak. And, you know, and then it shifted because, you know, I've learned through this program that, um, first of all, I wouldn't say no to Javi. And second of all, if I can do service, I'm always happy to. And I've only learned that through some of the people actually on this call and uh, the Gray Sheet community in general. So just a little bit about myself. I came to Gray Sheet, you know, God willing, next week will be two two years of gray sheet abstinence. I came in uh, on the Easter marathon and literally it was I, my higher power that brought me here. And so first of all, today would have been my dad's 100th birthday. So I want to offer my qualification in his honor uh, because I, he was, uh, I, or I think he certainly had the disease that I have or similar. Um, and he's, he was a, a terrific guy and a terrific dad. And um, I'm so pleased that I found a solution. And uh, I never thought that that was possible before that. Um, in addition, I've released 70 pounds and to be 5'1", that's, you know, that is just right. And so um, I was thinking of, um, that because the holiday of Passover, which I celebrate, which starts next Friday night, is the holiday of freedom. That for me um, really represents my journey in Gray Sheet so far. And it's, it's, it's a new journey, you know, it's only two years, but it's way more than I could have imagined because I, I want to talk about P's of the program. So P, first of all, is uh, to me was Passover when I came in. And I had watched somebody who was a religious leader for over a year and a half weigh and measure their food. And somehow, no matter what, he was able to continue that. And uh, his program wasn't good for me because it had some grains to it. But uh, I was led to our, to Gray Sheet. And so... Um, the first P uh, that really has been so important to me has been uh, planning. And uh, so, so not only do I plan my food, I write it down the night before and then call it in on time as we do. Um, and it's become, you know, a routine and a positive routine. And if anybody would have said to me prior to April 18th, 2017 that I would be writing down my food. I never did that before because I had tried everything, including nutritionists, dietitians, diet doctors, famous, not so famous, and I just couldn't do it. And I was unwilling to be accountable for the food I was eating. Um, so planning and planning if I'm going to go to an event or not. And if I am, how am I going to handle food? You know, as we do, am I going to eat before? Am I going to eat during? I mean, will I have my own food as backup? And, you know, what are you serving? And, um, and that's really, that's amazing. It's, I've literally learned to put on my big girl panties and stand up for myself and not be such a people pleaser. Uh, because the people after the first couple of minutes or whatever, they don't care anyway. And then I go home with it. And to me, the piece of the program is worth far more than whatever food I admit is. Um, and every day as we do, I prepare. And uh, what I found is that if I, the more I prep, the easier it is. And so uh, recently, I have been prepping a 
vegetables daily. So not only just the vegetables that I'm going to eat for the day that are cooked, but um, also the raw vegetables that I might have for my lunch. Uh -huh. And that makes it feel so easy. I just feel like so taken care of when I can just go and grab. Um, another item is prayer. Um, and as a P. Uh, so before uh -huh. each meal, I say a short prayer and, you know, thanking God for my abstinence and that, th that the food is exactly the right amount and, and thank you for it. And then I add a couple of other things with it, you know, um, you know, please have my words be kind. Uh, please, you know, let me say the, the right thing. Um, but I'm praying three times a day, which is three times more than I was haphazardly praying uh, prior to that. And in terms of prayer, because I'm abstinent now, I feel so much closer to my higher power. And that continues to grow. When I'm in the food, all bets are off. And uh, I just was never, I, I just felt like it was all about me, all about my food, what, you know, maybe what, uh, what wasn't happening that I thought should happen and my expectations. But when I'm prayerful and grateful, um, it's, it's a whole different story. It's really uh, a life worth living. Another P is to protect. So what I say yes to and what I say no to, because I'm going to be protecting my abstinence. And, um, you know, the first at least six months, nine months more, I would say no wherever there was a lot of food being served. And so that eliminated a lot of places where I used to go. Um, and now I'm still very judicious, but I do, I do show up more, but still ask myself, you know, will this contribute to my abstinence or take it away? If it's in jeopardy, you know, I just don't do it. And um, I, I used to, I had um, many bedroom slipper days and I love that term bedroom slipper days because for me, it really represents radical self care. And I used to think it prior to gray sheet, I used to think it was bad to take good care of yourself. And um, uh, I, you know, I have three sons, you know, the youngest is 25 and Hopefully he'll be graduating uh, um, in a month and that's exciting. And so, because I need to protect my absence because I don't show up as a great mom. I was not a great wife when I was married. And uh, you know, I hope someday, maybe someday soon to meet somebody and get remarried. But I now understand why, you know, in ways I didn't before how self-centered and selfish I am. And I never would have described myself as that before. Maybe none of us would. Um, another is uh, to pause and that I'm able to do that, not perfectly, but more regularly, especially if somebody says something that really gets me. And, um, you know, there's been quite a bit that's happened. January 4th, I was rear-ended at 70 miles an hour. Um, and I'm still recovering from that, but I'm so much better. And just, you know, I was out of work for seven weeks and um, very grateful to just have sustained the, you know, w just a neck and back situation that's continuing to resolve. And then um, found out about a little over a week ago that my mother has colon cancer and will be having surgery uh, at some point in the middle or after um, Passover. And um, so I'm worried about that. And, and so it's always, you know, like pause and see, what can I do right now? What do I have control over? And what don't I? And how can I show up as the best me? And another P is uh, patience. Somebody uh, who's a dear friend in gray sheet uh, when I first started, you know, within the first couple of weeks, offered me a, a slow recovery. And I thought that was so weird. 
Like, I want a fast recovery. I want to lose weight fast. I want to do the steps fast. I want to do everything fast, 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 fast. And then, you know, and then what? Since we don't graduate, I don't know where I thought I was going, but I thought that that was strange. And now I realize how exquisite it is that, um, you know, that, that God answers me in his time and that this recovery is also in his time and I can keep doing the next right thing, um, but I do have to have patience. And um, that, that another P is that this is a program of recovery. You know, that it's not a diet. And that because it's a program of, re of recovery, that means uh, a way of acting or proceeding is what a program means. And um, so it, it points to the fact that, you know, it's not just that foods that I can eat and the quantities I can eat, which are all critical, but that's not it. That's part of the plan and the program, but not the totality of it. Um, so that's really important. And um, I'm on a lot of phone bridge meetings. And now after this one, I hope to be on more Zoom meetings. But um, and there would be people that would really annoy me or even in a face-to-face -face meeting. And so I have to remember another P, which is principles above personalities, because not everybody's going to like me and I don't like everybody. But what's important is that we are a community and that's what rallies the day. And that's actually helped me at work and in other situations um, quite remarkably, I would say. So it's, you know, the dividends of this program keep paying off and paying off. Uh, another one, if, another P is positive pitch. It's that I hope that when people hear me, they know how grateful I am to be part of this program and that, that it is a solution to a problem that has been lifelong for me, lifelong. Weight up, occasionally down, up and down, up and down. And you know, if you saw me one month, if you see me three, four months later, it could be a different Joni. Uh, not to mention, you know, that I did have a lap band and uh, lost 80 pounds gained about 70 back and then had started gaining weight back and had the um, lap band removed because I was gaining weight. And I thought, why be uncomfortable? And thankfully my insurance covered it. And, uh, you know, they couldn't lap band my brain, which was where the real issue was. So that seemed at the time though, like the only best solution. So to know I can eat three delicious weighed measured meals every day and wake up not having to worry, you know, when is it going to, you know, when is the weight going to start coming back? And so that brings me to another P, which is the pleasure of eating. And I always thought it was so just not fair, frustrating, that as much as I would eat all the sugar and carbohydrates and quantities I would eat and, um, you know, and, and rapid, rapid, rapid food as if somebody was going to take it away. And then I never enjoyed it. I never enjoyed anything. And I wondered, how did I go from 122 to 190 something? And, you know, and, or, and at my highest, I was 230 and somehow whittled down, whittled down to 210. And, um, it, it just seems just, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. But the only time I've ever enjoyed my food is in these past two years because I savor my food. And I think that I'm passionate about making my food delicious and only choosing foods that I really want to eat. And so I make sure to the best I can that um, each meal is, mwah, is a number 10 meal. Now that doesn't always happen and you know there are things but wherever controllable i make it a number 10 delicious delicious meal and so i just want to end the final p is with the promises 
And so um, I guess I don't have time, but let me just finish with a short sentence. The last promise uh, on page 21 of the Daily Reflections is, we will suddenly realize that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. And that is so true for me. Thank you.